real. It's not even funny. Here's how the 80-20 rule works. If you start out on a project and you're on a mission and you want to build a company or build something, it's going to take you the first 80% of that journey, the first 80% of your time that you spend in building that, you're only going to build 20% of what it is you're doing. You're, you're only going to have achieved 20% of the success. Correct. 80% of your time and effort is only going to result in 20% of your success. And a lot of people, that's why a lot of people fail because they stop. Oh they yeah. They, they, they do 80% of the work and they're just like, my God, I, I, I thought I was going to be so much further along than this. How did I not, how have I not turned the corner and say you hit 79% of the, the, the time and you're like, there is just no end, no end. So it's like that three feet from gold uh, thing, which right. you taught me. I don't know if that's like a, a common s- saying, but I love it. Well, it was, a, it was an absolute true story. The guy yeah. talked about, he gave up his gold mine. Well, the, back in the, the, the 49ers days, back in, you know, uh, the big gold rush of the West in America, back in the uh, mid 1800s, there were, everybody was digging in the Hills to try to find these gold veins and once you find a gold vein, you could follow it for miles and get tons and tons of gold out of it. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. And uh, somebody was was uh, uh, digging and they found a vein and they were following it for a little while and then the vein went away. So they thought, well, we can we could probably pick this vein up somewhere down the line. Let's just keep on digging. And so they dug and dug and dug and they weren't getting nothing but just rock. No gold in it whatsoever. And they were trying to change direction. They were just trying to find it. They were they were going in every direction. And they couldn't find it for the longest time. And they were they were spending so much time and effort and, and uh, blood, sweat, and tears and work. And finally, uh, somebody came along. Oh, well, they, they were, were giving they were up running, on it. Yeah, they were running out of money. They're right. like, we are at the absolute brink. I mean, any much longer than this, and we'll have zero left. We'll have... Lost everything. We we'll lost the deed to the mines. We we'll lost all, right. all of our equipment. So let's at least salvage what we got and sell it. Cut our cut our losses. And so somebody came along and said, "I think we'll give, let's give it a shot." Turns out they were three feet the away. New, new people that picked it up. If they had just dug for three more feet, they would have found like the richest vein of gold. In the entire gold rush. And that guy that told that story said that that was the hardest life lesson that he had ever learned and never let that happen again. Yeah, and became very successful, wildly successful after that. So the 80-20 rule, 80% of the time, you only achieve 20% of the goal. That last 20%, that last 20% of the time, you are going to be swept up in a whirlwind of 80% of the goal you will experience 80 percent of that goal in the last 20 percent of your effort yeah i mean sean hannity talks about how he spent the first 20 years of his uh career in broadcasting making like a poverty wage right right i'm like he had to have a second job and he would do this he would do a show in the middle of the night where nobody was listening and he talks about the first time he was offered eighteen thousand dollars a year, a year. But he felt like I felt oh, felt he like, was thrilled because for the first time he's actually going to make a little bit of money for doing what he's doing. That's hysterical. Oh, he was so excited, and he was like, "Wow, maybe I'm going to go somewhere with this." Now he's multi multi millionaire. He's you wow. know he he could sell uh, advertising <clears throat> to anybody for millions of dollars uh, on his show, and um, you know now what he's doing now is the last 20% of the work. Right. These last couple of decades that he's going to be working before he retires and getting 80% of the spoils. So Right, right, yeah. right. Well, I mean, I'm sure right now he's in that 80% margin right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean just sure. just pulling it in. So but you don't see and that's another thing that the left likes to do. They like to hide the fact that that all the hard work of the past wasn't there. And that somebody like Sean Hannity just walked up one day and now he's there. Like somebody gave See, him look, that. Look, one, he just walked into that. One of his buddies. He just his, walked into one that. One of his buddies handed it to him. Oh, he's going to tell you this story, this American dream. He's going to tell you about the American dream. But that ain't happening, folks. 
So, anyways, okay, sorry to get off on, on, on a little bit of tangent there, but I, I felt that it needed to be put out there, and we need to put that out there more often. It really, really, it truly is hard work, personal responsibility. That's where you become conservative. That's where you, you uh, live within your means and strive for more. Okay? You don't go from that to living out of your means and striving for less. It, 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 not, Unless you've got somebody hits you with a brick, it's just not going to happen. Oh, so, did we did we uh, did we beat up the Ryan thing enough? Because there's uh, he's been interviewed and um, he explains why he's got a problem with uh, a, a President Trump, and I am just I, I don't get it. Whew. I do not get it. So it's all about the Constitution. Three times House Speaker. Paul Ryan explained Thursday. Well, Thursday, that was a couple days ago. This is like old news. I was probably during that interview. I guess. Why he cannot support Republican uh, Party's presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. It came down to Trump's expansive views of presidential power. What? I need what? examples. You can't just say that. Who's, who's got expansive views? Obama. And you didn't stop you them. You did crap. You did nothing for him. You did nothing to stop oh, the no, expansive you did. powers. Oh, right. You did do something. You allowed Obama to expand. So I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker Paul Ryan, you are in favor of expansive presidential powers. That and also this idea that Trump believes in expansive powers is imaginary. It's imagined by people who look at Trump as this CEO that has uh, ruled his expanded his power, expanded his power uh, with an iron fist or whatever, you know, and it's all imaginary. All of his uh, employees like him. Trump clearly understands the Constitution, because if you look at his website, he doesn't say he's going to repeal Obamacare. <laughs> he said he's going to ask Congress to repeal Obamacare, which is the way. Oh, oh, oh did, they, did they do that yet? They hold, Nobody, the, they hold the purse strings. They hold the money. Oh, no, they didn't do that. Congress Paul, could repeal Obamacare. No, no, no. Paul, no, it could be vetoed. Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan just funded it. Yeah, exactly. Paul Ryan funded Obamacare with the $4 trillion budget. What, what an what, idiot. What, what is... So see, so go, uh, moving on. Seen in light of previous statements by Ryan, it's clear that the speaker's biggest concern is that Trump does not share his belief that the presidency has become too powerful and needs to be reined in by Congress. Are you kidding me? I almost need to read that, that paragraph again. It's clear that the speaker's biggest concern is that Trump does not share his belief that the presidency has become too powerful and needs to be reined in by Congress. First of all, uh, hold on. First of all, Trump is not running for dictator of Congress. No. Congress can do what Congress wants to do. So who cares if, let's say it's true. I don't think it's true at all. But let's say, let's go into imaginary world and imagine that there's this guy named Donald Trump who thinks that, uh, that doesn't share Ryan's belief that the presidency has become too powerful and needs to be reined in by Congress. Trump has no power to prevent Congress from reining in presidential power. He's not running for the dictator of, of, of Congress. He's running for the president, which means he has no power over Congress. He has oh, no power oh, over no, Congress. See, no, see, you don't understand. You don't understand. Paul Ryan is showing his hand. He's letting you know that Obama had power over him. Oh. That's why he wasn't able to rein in Obama. Oh, my God. And so now we weren't able to rein in Obama. Oh, wow. If you put Trump in there, we'll never rein in anybody. Oh, my gosh. But there was also hints in Ryan's comments to Jake Tapper that he suspects Trump may not understand or appreciate the balance of power between the president and Congress as set forth in the U.S. Constitution. Read his website. He clearly uh, oh, knows. That's projection because Paul Ryan doesn't know the separations of power. Or his own power. It's absolutely, to be able to rein in the purse strings and not fund the government. He's an idiot. He's a complete... Apparently, he doesn't even understand... 
okay, it's and, one and thing- if it doesn't matter, he's part of the he's part of the, the GOP. The machine, right? It, it does. It's one thing to not understand Trump's positions, or not know them, or not read his website. I can understand your inability to do your own homework, whatever. But clearly, he doesn't understand his own constitutional powers. This is just amazing. Or the limits on the presidency. This is just amazing. Unbelievable. So, quote. Here's a, a quote from Ryan. I think conservatives want to know: Does he share our values? and our principles on limited government, the proper role of the executive, adherence to the Constitution. Ryan said, There are a lot of questions that conservatives, I think, are going to want answers to, myself included. First of all, we know now you're not a conservative. When Ryan was picked to be VP for Romney in 2012, he was uh, it was lied to us smoke and mirrors. It was lied to us that he was the conservative pick. He's the conservative side of the liberal GOP nominee Romney. And he was it was he was picked because it was going to it was going to satisfy the Tea Party at the time. Right. right, right. He was the Tea Party guy. He's since been complete. He's obliterated that reputation because of what he has done as speaker of the house and what he has said since he's been uh, uh since he's lost the election in 2012 on the uh, romney ticket he's right. he's he's no more conservative than romney or anybody else of the rhinos jeez oh pete so democrats accused george w bush of expanding the powers of the presidency to a dangerous degree and Republicans like Ryan have said the same about President Obama. But lately, Ryan has also blamed Republican presidents who preceded Obama for placing the lawmaking authority of Congress with executive orders and federal agency rulemaking. He has done nothing about it. He's in pow- Paul Ryan has been in Congress. Uh, you've got all these GOP establishment. You've got all the all the people that are coming out after Trump saying that Trump is bad, Trump will never make it work. Look at what they've done to make it work. None of them. None of them. Lowest rating of uh, approval rating, Congress and Senate. The, The American people know that you all up there on the Hill have completely failed the American people over the last seven years. And God help us if we can't straighten this ship out. We will fall down into an abyss just like Europe if we don't do something to stop you all or actually to stop you all from doing nothing. You've done nothing and let the Democrats run wild. Well, apparently this is all a misunderstanding of what Trump's all about and what and how things work in general, because this next paragraph is going to make blood shoot out of everything. Wow. Okay, so here we go. While Ryan also said that he wants to see Trump adopt a more hopeful, positive message that can attract a broader set of voters, which, by the way, how much more broad does it get? There are Democrats that are like, you know what? I am not about to vote for Hillary, but you know what? This Trump guy seems pretty cool. Yes! I'm cool with that! Yeah, go ahead. Oh, my gosh. He insisted... That he is not calling on Trump to renounce any of his policy positions, which, by the way, if you go to his website, you'll see how conservative they are. Uh, But I digress. He insisted that he is not calling on uh, Trump to renounce any any of his policy positions. Ryan, however, was forcefully criticized as I'm sorry, has forcefully criticized Trump over his proposal to ban Muslims from entering this country. And for his slowness to repudiate the support of white supremacists for inciting violence against protesters. Uh, that's the only thing that's true. It, 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 it is true that Trump did say, I'd like to punch that guy and somebody do, you know, somebody do something about that guy. And if, if, uh, if uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, give your legal fees or I'll, I'll whatever, pay for your legal fees if you do something to that guy. You know, well, he pulled back. He said, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. I mean, it was a mistake and that is true, but that's the only thing. For, okay. His slowness to repudiate support of white supremacists. 
To say that, that is literally a liberal, a lying liberal position. It's, you have to gobbledygook. Be a, it's gobbledygook. Well, it's, a, it's what Democrats say. Right. Democrats say, oh, look, 